Welcome to part two of the Introduction to Proofs video on equivalence relations. In this video, we'll see two more examples of equivalence relations. We start with a very trivial example. Let X be any set. We can always define these two equivalence relations. What's called E singles, that's not its official name, it's just what I call it. E singles, which is the collection of all X comma X and E full, which is all pairs. So in the first example, we use as few pairs as possible. And in the second one, we use as many pairs as possible. What does this look like? Well, in the first one, we relate one to itself, two to itself, and three to itself. And in the last one, we do every possible relation. Not only is one related to itself, two and three related to themselves, but also we have one, three, and three, one, and two, one, and one, two, all of them. So this is all of the relations. This is as few as possible. You should think about why did we have to include these three loops? Which property of equivalence relations tells us that? The reason we call these trivial examples is because they have nothing to do with the set themselves. Right? This isn't about less than or equal to, or about distance or anything like that. You can define this no matter what your set is. Now let's look at a quite sophisticated example, which is X is going to be the set integers cross the naturals, and E will be the collection of all pairs of pairs, such that PY is equal to QX. Now let's take a moment to understand what's going on before we continue. In this example, what makes it so challenging is that the set itself is a Cartesian product. So every element is going to be a pair, and the equivalence relation will relate to those pairs. So we're going to say two pairs are related if they satisfy this equation. Now, at first, you might think this equation is nonsense, this is uh, complicated and hard. But this is a relation that you've used since basically grade three, and I'm going to try to convince you of that. Let's start out by understanding a little bit formally first. I claim that one, two, and three, six are related. How do I check that? Well, is the first thing and the fourth thing, I take first times fourth, is that the same as second times third? Second times third, yes, this is six. Now this is a complicated formal way of doing it, and the intuition might uh, illuminate things. If you do some cross multiplication, this is saying that P over Q is equal to X over Y. So this is saying that they are equivalent as fractions. Now let's go through and prove that this is an equivalence relation. Now I've written the relation up at the top for you. Reflexive and symmetric are left as exercises for you. They're not really that hard, and you'll see that it's just, um, it, it takes you one line each. The interesting one, and the one that has a mathematical idea in it, is transitive. So let's go through that one. Now in trying to prove transitive, you start with, assume that these two things are in the relation, and these two things are in the relation. And your goal is to prove that the first thing and the third thing are in relation. So let's start with our assumptions. Let's unwind them a little bit. The first one tells us that PY is equal to QX. And the second one tells us that XB is equal to YA. You should check this um, if it's not clear to you. Um, this is saying first times fourth is equal to second times third. So check that when you plug in these ones, you get this. All right, now what we want to show is this. We want to show that the first and third are related. And if you unwrap what that means, it's PB is equal to QA. All right, so now we're in the realm of doing multiplication. We have two equalities and we want to get a third equality. This proof always messes me up. 
um, and I'm glad that I get to get to do a video about it because when I do it in class, I often make mistakes. Um, there's like lots of fiddly things and you can easily make a mistake. So what I encourage you to do afterwards is without looking at this proof, try to reprove it. And you'll see that there's lots of different places you can go wrong and there's lots of different choices you can make. So here I've written down the formatting a little bit. Here's our starting assumption. Here's what we want. Now the first thing we do is we multiply by b. So this equality tells us this equality. And now this one right here, we have this xb equals ya, so we can replace the bx part. Now we have pby equals yaq. Now we're thoroughly lost. Well, we look at what is it that we're trying to do? We're trying to prove PB is equal to QA. Well, here's PB, here's QA, and we only have this Y um, difference. Are we allowed to cancel the Ys? Well, where does Y live? Well, Y was a second coordinate, and all the second coordinates are naturals. So then we can cancel it. And there we go, we got what we wanted. One of the reasons I like this proof is that it shows off why the denominator has to be a natural number and not just an integer, right? If this y was a zero, you wouldn't be able to cancel. Finally, let's take a moment to reflect. To show that a relation is not an equivalence relation, what do you have to show? Make precise the idea that E singles is the smallest equivalence relation on the set and make sense of E full is the largest equivalence relation on the set. What do we mean by smallest and largest in this setting? Where have you seen equivalence relations before? Maybe in this course or in other math courses or in other places. Thank you very much and have a good day.